medicine and its subjects by avicenna 980 a.d to 1037 a.d this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit LibriVox.org. Medicine and its Subjects Avicenna, a corrupted name of Ibn Sina, the greatest philosopher of the Eastern Mohammedan world, and one of the most universally accomplished men of any country, was born in the district of Bokhara, 980 AD. A precocious boy, he mastered all branches of medieval science at the great Baghdad school finally learning medicine from a christian his repute was so great that at seventeen he was called to attend the emir of bokhara whom he cured and was given great rewards and free use of the royal library the emir dying and he becoming highly unpopular he left baghdad wandered about and finally settled at georgian opening a school of philosophy again winning dislike he went to hamadan and was made vizier to the emir where he was so much disliked that the emir barely saved him from death at the soldier's hands retiring a while was made court physician and wrote his great encyclopedia of philosophy the shafa he lectured and studied part of every twenty-four hours and caroused another part imprisoned for treason by the emir's successor he escaped and was attached to the prince of ispahan but destroyed his constitution by debauchery and drugs and died in ten thirty seven the influence of his philosophy throughout the middle ages was enormous as well on jews and christians as muslims he maintained the uncreated eternal existence of the world and determinism with the immortality of the soul one medicine i would explain is a science by which the conditions of the human body are known as to the means by which it is healed or the reverse and health in possession is preserved or lost health restored true some will have it that medicine is divided into theoretic and practical but you have made the entire subject theoretic when you have explained what science is we will answer this however by saying that there is some portion of the arts which is theoretic and practical and of philosophy that it is theoretic and practical and of medicine it is alleged that it is theoretic and practical in either one of these branches we wish to convey one thing when we call it theoretic and another when we call it practical yet it is not necessary for us to proclaim the diversity which exists between them except in medicine so when we shall have explained concerning medicine what part of it is theoretic and that all outside of that is practical it is not to be supposed we intend to say that one of the divisions of medicine is to know and another to practice as many judge in examining this subject but you are to know that what we wish to convey is otherwise and that neither of the two divisions of medicine is anything but science only one of them means the elements of knowing a condition the other those of operating on it lately it is true we have appropriated to the first of the two the name of science or the theoretic and to the second we have appropriated the name of the practical by the theoretic of this we mean that when we shall have known it we shall acquire so much knowledge as when it is said in medicine that the classes of fevers are three and that the combinations are nine and by the practical of this we mean not an operation in its effect nor the task of causing corporeal motions but the division of medicine which when we have known it will aid us in the research into knowledge or opinion as it is said in medicine that to inflamed imposthumes are to be applied at first things which drive them away and cool them off and thicken them up and afterwards we must mix the repellents with relaxants and after checking it soothing relaxants will be enough 
and further that imposthumes are of matter which the principal members expel therefore this teaching will aid you in forming a judgment and this judgment is a proof of the character of the operation and when you have known the character of the two divisions you will have become an expert in scientific knowledge and operative knowledge even if you have never operated nor can any one explain that there are three conditions of the human body sickness health and a condition which is neither sickness nor health when two have sufficed for you for it is possible that when one who teaches this has fully considered it he may not find one of the two things further if this trinity were necessary that which we have told you was a departure from health would produce infirmity and the third condition the absence of which has been given as the definition of health which is the habit or condition from which sound operations of this subject proceed but we will not quarrel with physicians over this for i am not one who would dispute with them in this matter nor will this contention with them nor those who are opposed to them be any assistance in medicine for in this matter the certainty of either doctrine pertains to first principles two since medicine considers the human body as to the means whence it is cured and is drawn away from health and since the knowledge of anything is not acquired or completed since it has had causes unless it is known by its causes we ought therefore in medicine to know the causes of health and sickness and because health and sickness and their causes are often manifest and often hidden and not to be comprehended except by the significance of symptoms we ought also in medicine to know the symptoms which occur in health and sickness now it was declared in the ascertained science that the knowledge of anything is not acquired except through the knowledge of its causes and beginnings if it has had causes and beginnings nor completed except by means of knowing its accidents and accompanying essentials there are then four sorts of causes material efficient formal and final material causes on which health and sickness depend are the affected member which is the immediate subject and the humors and in these are the elements and these two are subjects according to their mixings together perhaps they become altered in the composition and alteration of the substance which is thus composed a certain unity is attained efficient causes are the causes changing and preserving the conditions of the human body as airs and what are united with them and viands and waters and drinks and what are united with them and evacuation and retention and districts and cities and habitable places and what are united with them and bodily and animate movings and restings and sleepings and wakings on account of them and changes in age and diversities in it and in races and arts and manners and in things which befall the human body when they touch it and are either against nature or are not against nature formal causes are physical constitutions and virtues which result from them and combinations final causes are operations and in the science of operations without doubt lies the science of virtues and the science of virtues as we have set forth these therefore are the subjects of the doctrine of medicine whence one inquires concerning the human body how it is cured or diseased one ought to attain perfection in this research namely how health may be preserved and sickness removed and the causes of this kind are rules in eating and drinking and the choice of air and the measure of movement and rest and doctoring with medicines and doctoring with the hands all this with physicians is according to three species of the well of the sick and of the medium whom we have spoken of end of medicine and its subjects by avicenna